happy Hanukkah. I'm Rabbi Lynn Leverman, the community chaplain from Jewish Family Service of St. Paul here with Cantor Deb Winston, another one of our chaplains. We are delighted to be here to celebrate with you the Hanukkah festival. Uh, the days now are growing darker and cooler. We feel a sense of, of closing in and uh, trying to stay warm. And yet we have this most joyous holiday that comes for us to celebrate uh, the season and to bring light into this darkness. Hanukkah reminds us that at the coldest, darkest time of the year, we actually can dispel some of this darkness by bringing the light. Even that one small flame can certainly illuminate a very dark room. And I know we're talking about perhaps literal candles, which we will light here in just a moment. But if you think about all the light that is inside of us, to bring that out is to bring out the hope and message of the Hanukkah celebration. So it's our hope in the next short while together, our hope and our prayer that uh, we will help to increase the light in your lives, to bring the joy of Hanukkah, the message of its celebration, and the hope for freedom and well-being for all to you and to uh, wherever you are. So, you know, it's a strange thing, Hanukkah, right now, actually. So many of us have just finished celebrating uh, Thanksgiving. And we are, in the Jewish world, kind of familiar with something where the holidays fall not according to the secular calendar. They actually happen according to the Jewish calendar, which means that we can remember that uh, Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, started in September. And so, therefore, all the holidays got pushed up. Here we are in the month of Kislev as we begin the celebration and celebrate the eight full days of Hanukkah. Um, sometimes, in very not often, but they have coincided so early that Hanukkah and Thanksgiving came at the same time. This happened a couple of years ago, and lots of people had a lot of fun with that, trying to figure out how to celebrate those together. But here we are, Hanukkah happens just after Thanksgiving, and in and of itself, it is a wonderful day of celebration. Uh, that begins with one candle and will continue with the lighting of eight full candles. And for the lighting, here we are. I invite you to join me. We're not sure exactly what night of Hanukkah you might be watching this or what day, but we loaded the Hanukkah with all eight candles and I invite you to sing along with me as I light the shamash first. and then use the shamash to light everybody else and sing the blessing. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kidashanu b'mitzvotav Bitsivanu lehan likner shel hanukkah, and the second blessing as well. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam sheasani sim lavoteinu. Bayamim ahim bazman And if this were the first night, we would add a shehechianu. And again, since we don't know which night it is for you, we're going to go ahead and say the shehechianu together. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam shehechianu vekiyamanu vehigianu lazman hazeh. I think by adding the shehechianu, even whatever night you are, is uh, a message of gratitude to be in a space of freedom and we hope good health and well-being. And the Sheikh Yanu really acknowledges this, this time together. Beautiful. Um, Thank you. 
So the we've got our lights, and now a little bit about the uh, story of Hanukkah. Um, in um, the year 168 uh, BCE, before the Common Era, there was a Syrian ruler. Uh, his name was Antiochus, or Antiochus, depending on your pronunciation. And he had this plan. He wanted to be in charge of everybody. He wanted everybody to follow his rules. And um, that meant that those who were of any other faith or tradition could not observe their particular traditions. And of course, that meant all the Jews as well. He had a very large empire under which the land of Israel also fell. And so he set about squashing the religious uh, opportunities of those who were Jewish. And those opportunities were celebrated in the ancient temple, the remains of which we still see in Jerusalem today. So what he did, he took his very large, well-equipped army and he marched them into Jerusalem. And he knew that if he could just strike at the heart of the Jewish people, he would, he would completely make them submissive to his, to his desire. And so he went straight to the temple. And he and his men, they, uh, they actually vandalized the temple. They destroyed it. Um, they uh, put an altar where, uh, an idol up where the altar was and they desecrated the holiness of the space by extinguishing the eternal light and they sp um, spread out over the entire place not only blood of an animal but in particular blood of a swine um, and he decreed that torah could no longer be studied if you could hurt the heart of the jews is to be forbidden to share the words of the torah and to uh, otherwise observe aspects and tenets of our faith well, when the Syrians continued to march forward to taking over um, the lands where the Jews were living, um, they demanded that they not only follow what they, uh, that they no longer follow the Jewish custom, but they had to follow the example of the Syrians. So they actually said to them that you, you have to follow our faith, right? You have to uh, worship idols. Well, this, um, this was one uh, large affront to the Jewish people who, of course, knew that there's only one God. And so it got them thinking. And in particular, one individual who saw that that is not what it means to be Jewish. And so he took up the message to say, whoever is of faith of God will follow me. And this was the voice of Matityahu, of Mattathias, otherwise known as Judah Maccabee. And he led the charge to say, that is not what we want, what the Syrians are offering, really? What we are about is the oneness of God. Now, what was extraordinary about Judah and those who followed him is that they were largely untrained. They had not practiced the art of being soldiers, and they certainly were not equipped nearly as well as the soldiers of the Syrian army. And yet, they still managed to figure out how to uh, make their point known and make themselves present in um, the face of the Syrian army. They were like well-intentioned well, um, uh, and very spirited men who fought sort of a, uh, a, uh, a warfare that was, on, was in the way of skirmishes. And in fact, it took them three years to eventually defeat, and they did, to eventually defeat this major Syrian army. And in their defeat, of course, what they did was they went back to the temple to bring that back to the heart of the Jewish people. And when they entered, what they found again were the idols up on the altar and this blood smeared everywhere so judah ordered the and the rabbis that came back with them ordered the people to begin to clear and clean the temple and to rededicate it part of that rededication as some of us are very familiar with this part of the story is to relight the lamp so they looked around they knew that the lamp was a very special this is the eternal light and that oil for that lamp had to be holy oil and they looked around, and as the story goes, they found one small jar. Well, not to be uh, defeated again, Judah ordered them to go ahead and light the lamp. And in the meantime, he put his fastest rider on his best horse and said, go and get more holy oil. And when you return, we'll relight the light. But the miracle is that the oil lasted for eight days. And thus, when the rider returned, we now know that it was the story of the miracle of oil and the miracle of God's presence back in the, in the um, lives of the people. I just want to tell the other part of the story. So that's a beautiful story, and that's one that we hold very dear. And it's about the fact that we aren't a people bent on war as Jews. Rather, we are 
uh, seeking to have the opportunity to be free to celebrate the religion as we would like to celebrate our faith and actually that message to all that all should be able to celebrate and enjoy their faith traditions as well in freedom but the rabbis were concerned because a few years afterwards they started celebrating Hanukkah as a military victory so in order to diminish the fact that this was a military victory, even though it was these scrappy little gangs of, of the Maccabees who went up against the Syrian army, it wasn't for that reason that they succeeded. It was for God. It was the spirit of God that was behind them that helped the uh, Judah and his men be successful in returning the temple to the people and for the opportunity for the Jews to once again be able to celebrate and enjoy the uh, message of freedom and the light of Hanukkah. And so the eight days of Hanukkah became part of our tradition from that time forward, an opportunity to be mindful of God's spirit in us. And um, as we continue to celebrate, perhaps a song. An old traditional song that gives a nod to the Maccabees. Who can retell the things that befell in Hanukkah. Uh, another aspect to share is in fact the beauty of the light. The light of the Hanukkah menorah increases over the eight days. In fact there is this tradition that we do not um, decrease the light. One could say, it was an argument between Hillel and Shammai, one could say that you should put all eight lights in the first night and then seven and then six and five, but um, that was Shammai. Hillel came back and said no, we're going to increase our light that we're going to make it even more substantial and more beautiful in our lives throughout the eight days. The uh, amazing thing about light, again, is that even when you share one light, you don't diminish it, you actually increase it. And I like to think about that in, light, in uh, the way that um, we live our lives, especially coming through this time of COVID. We haven't quite left it behind us yet, but we're a little bit more out there, a little bit more sharing time together with friends and perhaps family and others in our community. And we want to sort of increase that spirit. And we feel that when we are able to be with each other. For some of us, we still are not able to, but we can still feel that presence of the joy that we get from another uh, individual in the way that we live our lives uh, in the world. I'd like to share a, a reading with you about the um, meaning of this simple candle, the simple light. There is something about a candle that makes it more spiritual than physical. A physical substance, when spread, becomes thin. Spirituality, when spread, expands and grows. When you use something physical, it's used up and diminished. The more money you spend, the less you have. The more gasoline you use, the emptier your tank becomes. But the spiritual things increase with use. If you share your love with another, you will become more loving, not less. When you give a spiritual gift, the recipient gains and you lose nothing. This spiritual property 
candles share. When you use one candle to light another, the original candle remains bright. Its light is not diminished by being shared. On the contrary, two candles together enhance each other's brightness and increase the light. Hanukkah, Hanukkah, come light the menorah. Let's have a party, we'll all dance the hora. Gather round the table, we'll give you a treat. Dreidels to play with and latkes to eat. And while we are playing, the candles are burning low. One for each night, they shed a sweet light to remind us of days long ago. One for each night, they shed a sweet light to remind us of days long ago. And this is what it sounds like in Yiddish. Chanukah, oi Chanukah, yon tof a shener, a lustiger, a freiliger, nith do no chuzoiner, alle nacht ik dreilig spielen nir, frische heise ladkes essen han a shir, geschwinder, zin kinder, di Chanukah lit teg lechon, zo chal hanisim lugot far di There's a mouthful. <laughs> wow. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we have some things to show you and share about Hanukkah. We've lit our Hanukkiah here, but um, you might know that the more tra most traditional looking Hanukkiah is something such as this. It is, uh, this is a small version. Um, it has its eight candle spaces plus the space for the shamash. Of course, I'm wearing a, a menorah on my uh, Hanukkiah on my shirt here. And it actually has a special name. Menorah means simply lamp. A Hanukkiah indicates that this one is special to use for the celebration of Hanukkah. There's a, a special lamp I just want to show you that is very, very old. This is actually a lamp from the time of Judah Maccabee. And it is an antique. So that in those days, of course, they did not have candles to light. They had to put oil inside of the bowl. And this, you can see, is a little bit dark and a little wick. And to make Hanukkah be celebrated, you would have eight of these small lamps to uh, add one for each night. We have some other fun uh, mm -hmm. Hanukkah out here to show you. We do. This one is a little bit more contemporary. The holders for the candles are on the top in an arch so that when it's lighted, it makes an arch of light. Very different. I had never seen one in this shape before. This one is very whimsical. It's by an artist who's um, locally known as well and she has done lots and lots of artwork with these flying figures in them. And it's got little Judaica hanging from it. Musical notes and the Stars of David and hearts and eighth notes over here. So this one appealed to me as a musician. It's kind of fun. This one I've had for about 40 or 45 years and came from Israel and is made up of little tiny pieces of Jerusalem stone, the same sort of stone that you will see around the old city and at the Temple Mount. Um, I bought this on my very first trip to Israel in 1972. That's a little ways back. So I've always had, and then of course, this one that we have lighted, which was um, purchased in Jerusalem called Sunrise Over the Old City. Brought that home about 10 years ago. 
It's fun to have different styles and different kinds and then light them all when we have our Hanukkah party. That's fabulous. Thank you for sharing all mm -hmm. those. Some other things to share. We actually have a collection here of dreidels. The dreidel game is one of the games that's best known for Hanukkah. It is, uh, was started for children to be able to have something to help add to the joy. And these are little bitty dreidels. Um, these are simply plastic ones. And I think here's another one that, <laughs> that lights up if we were able to spin it on the table. Um, and even dreidels that you can fill up and put treats and candy in. When I was growing up, we uh, played dreidel by using M&Ms on the floor, but I know some people use pennies or peanuts or um, perhaps even Hanukkah gelt, which is the chocolate Hanukkah candy. Something uh, as many uh, different types of the uh, Hanukkiot that we have is how many different types of the uh, dreidels that we have. One of the unique things to note about each one is that they all have the same letters. So they all will have a nun, a gimel, a shin, and a hay. And if these letters are put together as the first, the, the, as the first letter of the words they stand for, it means in Hebrew, nes, gadol, hayah, sham. Sorry, I got a little out of order there for you. The great miracle happened there. Right? The great miracle, the liberation to freedom happened in the land of Israel. But if you pick up a dreidel in Israel, if you should visit sometime, which we always hope and aspire toward, this dreidel would have one letter difference. Nes, Gadol, Haya, Po. The great miracle happened here. It's a wonderful thing to know that the great miracle, if you buy a dreidel in Israel, of course, it happens in the land of Israel. Although great miracles can happen in so many places as well. The miracle of freedom, the miracle of, of creating opportunities for people to live out the fullness of their lives. There's a lot, been a lot of fun with dreidels. Just to show you a few. Here's a beautiful one that's made um, with images of Jerusalem. And again, you can see the letters at the top. And if you're interested in something a little bit more fun, you can have some Disney characters on a dreidel. These all actually do spin if you uh, had enough space to try. If you're a baseball fan, you can get yourself a baseball dreidel. <laughs> and for those who are more inclined toward perhaps the biblical stories, this is a dreidel that's filled with some of our biblical characters on it. And last is a dreidel. I'm not certain how well it spins, but it certainly is a lot of fun to look at. This is a glass dreidel, a uh, beautiful glass dreidel. It's a little harder to see the letters, but nevertheless, another beautiful addition to just having some fun at Hanukkah. Um, you know, we have Hanukkah fun facts. Uh, you might not know that, for example, that Syrian army that I mentioned earlier, well, its great armament wasn't just the fact that they had a lot of soldiers with spears and uh, swords, but they actually had the ancient tank, which was an elephant. So imagine an elephant coming and trying to <laughs> trample down your whole city. It's an interesting part of that story. Another fun fact about Hanukkah is that uh, in 1946, a uh, debate was held at the University of, Ch of Chicago. It is an ongoing debate held every year since. It is called the Great Latka Hamantash Debate. So the latkes, which we'll look at and we'll say something about in just a moment, uh, is the one of the key foods of the Hanukkah celebration. And the hamantash, hamantashin, is the celebration is the food celebrated at Purim. And they would actually have two very good scholars come together in front of a public forum and debate the merits of each one of these foods. And this was really fun. I just learned this the other day, wanted to share with everybody. In, a, in Israel itself, in the modern day of Israel, okay, get ready for this. There are over 17 and a half million jelly donuts eaten every year. Oof. That's a lot of jelly. And sugar. And sugar. A lot of jelly donuts, but wow, what a lot of fun for the Hanukkah celebration in Israel. Well, speaking of food, we have some food here with us. We have these beautiful latkes. <laughs> so you're gonna have to have sort of a smell of your own, sort of pretend the beautiful frying smell of potatoes and onions in your house. And of course, the delicious jelly donuts. 
There they are. And um, uh, Kendra Deb, why do we have donuts and uh, latkes for Hanukkah? They're fried in fried. oil. Oil. Here's that oil theme again. Right. There are some other foods. There's gelt. There's a, actually a Spanish, uh, a um, Sephardic tradition of a food that's called, remember what it's called for us. <laughs> it was right on the tip of my tongue. Right. We have a picture of it. I don't have it here with us. But we have bimuelos, right? And bimuelos. A, it is similar to a donut, but it's a fried, a fried delicacy. dough a topped fried dough. with exotic sugar syrup. That's in it. case you didn't get enough, right? So a lot of fun for Hanukkah. Well, we have really enjoyed being with you. We have some more um, songs to sing and to hear, and uh, in, then we'll uh, have to unfortunately bid you farewell. So. What a joyful thing to celebrate Hanukkah with you. Sivivon is Hebrew for a dreidel. And this song celebrates the spinning of the dreidels. It says, Sivivon, dreidel, spin, spin, spin. Hanukkah is a great holiday. It is a celebration for our nation. A great miracle happened there. Sivivon, sof, 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 Chanukah, hu chatov, Chanukah, hu chatov, Sivivon, sof, 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 Chag simcha, hu lam, Neskadol haya sham, Neskadol haya sham, Chag simcha, hu lam, Sivivon, sof, 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 Chanukah, hu chatov, Chanukah, Sof, sof, sof. Do we have one more song to finish us out? One that's not terribly traditional, but especially for folks who don't speak Hebrew and would just like to clap along. This gives honor to the light that we've created. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This time sing along with me. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. That's great. Well, we've uh come to the end of our time together. Thank you, Cantor Dev, for Thank being you. here and bringing such great music. Um, we are just delighted to celebrate. We wish everybody a Chag Urim Sameach, a beautiful and festive uh, celebration of the lights. And um, I think we're just going to have to close by uh, <laughs> enjoying some of these wonderful delicacies. So wishing you all a happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Mm. Hmm. <laughs>